<laughs> Hi. Hi. What's up? Oh yeah, I'm supposed to be filling time because you're finishing your Reese's cup. You know, it's Halloween. It's that's what I was thinking. It's we're you're getting in the spirit of Halloween. Yeah. But I've I've been getting in the spirit of Halloween all day. By which I mean I've been eating candy all day. <laughs> I know we have been devouring this. Gonna have to get some Pop more Halloween. Full of treats. Gonna have to get some more Halloween candy soon. Oh, for sure. <laughs> One Halloween candy run does not it's suffice true. for Halloween. Well, I also got it really early. That's true. You also wore a costume really early, as we talked as, as we talked about last week. <laughs> oh, you bitch at the bar. Yeah. Winnie the Pooh costume. Anyway, it was, it was a very cute Winnie the Pooh costume. Thank you. Did you post it on our Instagram page? No, I accidentally did, though. But you should, so people can see. Well, no. That's cute. <laughs> Thank you. Well, no. <laughs> so, welcome to Mystery Murdery Thingy. Uh-huh. Mystery. Mysteries. Where we talk about mysteries. And murders. <laughs> and thingies. And lots You're of You're supposed stuff. to say murderies. That's the com- comedy part. I know. I didn't do it intentionally. We don't, like, consider ourselves a comedy podcast because, like, I don't know. I- I'm not, like, trying to be funny. I just feel yeah. like we're, like, conversational. Right. We don't consider ourselves, like, comedians. We're not, like, laugh out loud, like, you know... Yeah, pl- plus sometimes we get kind of preachy, <laughs> like, which I feel like most com- comedy podcasts don't do. Yeah. I don't know. We we don't try to not be funny, I guess, when it comes up. You you got to, like, laugh sometimes because this shit gets really heavy, mm-hmm. like, really quick. <laughs> so yeah. you, you can't just be, like, all gloom and doom all the time. I just think it's important to, like, I don't know, I always focus on the why. Yeah, no, definitely. When you, like, look at really fucked up shit. Yeah, like, like, why did this person do this? Why did this happen? Why torsos, man? More torsos today. <gasps> for me. I don't know why I keep coming back to these, like, murderers who dismember bodies. It's, it's like, it's so fucking crazy. Should like, I, that journalist. Go Are we gonna talk about that? Oh, I don't have any weird shit in the news. Let me... Oh, the journalist who went in the submarine and... Yeah, we should talk about that. Yeah, that was fucked up. Maybe that's a weird news extra thing. Maybe. Oh, yeah, we should... Exclusive <laughs> content. We should do those. Um, anyway. But that is a really weird story. Um, excuse me. I'm surprised at how popular it is. What? This, that story about the... Yeah, because I feel like a journal... Uh, I know, like, journalist killings happen, but I feel like it's not on, like... NPR and like trending on Twitter. Yeah, there's select few, I guess, like this one with Jamal Khashoggi right now. Yeah, it's crazy. It's pretty yeah. nuts. Mm-hmm. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's talking about it. It's a thing that everybody's talking about. Like, what's something everybody's talking about right now? The new royal baby. Have what? You heard about that? Harry and Meghan. Oh right, baby. right. They were talking about her on Twitter. Her, her plain white dress plainest fucking dress i've seen in my entire life was like like it crashed the designer's website because everybody wanted it It, i just (laughs) how (laughs) everybody's very into fads i guess and it was like all americans (laughs) You know. <laughs> Why are American people more into the British royalty than British people? Because it's something we don't have. Yeah, because we didn't want it. Because we were like, no. America! <laughs> That's, we, don't, we don't need that shit. <laughs> Extraneous. Freedom! Freedom! Yeah. For, yeah, some people at least. Um, yeah, definitely. What are we talking about? Mysteries and murders. <laughs> oh, and yeah. That's right. I'm doing a thingy. Oh, I'm Mario, too, by the way. Oh, that's Mario. I'm Chloe. Now you're <laughs> supposed to say that's Chloe. That's Chloe. Yeah. So you know our voices. 
Because we sound so much the same. We don't sound alike at all. I like, I don't know, I really like your voice. And you already know oh, that. Thank I've you. always liked your voice. Well, my voice has always liked you. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Okay, we're doing this. Okay. Okay. Um, should I go first? Woo! I do want you to go first, yes. Okay, cool. Okay, so I am doing a fairly recent serial killer, un- unsolved serial killer, uh, the B1 Butcher. Uh, so this is actually one that's from uh, Namibia, so it's like southern um, Africa. It's like north of, uh, you know, like Zimbabwe and South Africa and stuff. Okay. So there's this road, the B1 uh, Highway, National Road B1, that runs like all the way north-south through Namibia. Um, kind of like, you know, like I-55, right? Like okay, runs right. all the way through... You know, the United States, like, north to south. And between 2005 and 2007, there were five dismembered women's corpses found, like, along the highway. Sometimes it was, like, the head just, like, sitting out there by the highway. A lot of times it was the parts in, like, garbage bags um, that were actually, like, found there. And let me see, there was kind of a good, like, rundown of it that I was going to read from one of my sources. So this is from the Namibian Sun. Um, and it's just kind of like a, a rundown of all the different like victims, how they were found. So the first B1 butcher victim was 22-year-old Melanie Jance, whose body was discovered lying next to the Western Bypass near the Van Eck Power Station on August 20th, 2005. Next, the body of Juanita Mabula was discovered lying next to the Western Bypass in the area of the Windhoek Turf Club on the morning of September 25th in the same year. Oh my God. She had been decapitated. <gasps> Almost a month later, on October 24th, her head was found in a plastic shopping bag next to a road culvert five kilometers south of the Groot Aub turnoff on the Windhoek Rehabeth uh, Road. In June 2007, the B1 butcher is suspected to have struck again after a female human torso that had been cut in two (gasps) was found in a rubbish bin next to the B1, about 42 kilometers north of Windhoek. Two human thighs were later found in another rubbish bin, 25 kilometers north of Rehoboth, later a human head, two lower legs, and two feet, all of which the three middle toes of each were cut off were found lying next to the B6 oh trans Kalahari Road, about 35 kilometers east of Windhoek. There's so much. Yeah, and it's all centered around this uh, this town of Windhoek. Um, the victim was later identified as Sana Helena Garros. At that time, the police neither confirmed nor ruled out the possibility that these deaths may be linked to the death of another young woman, uh, 18-year-old Viola Swartboy, who was buried naked in a shallow grave at the Rehoboth. <gasps> On December 28th in 2005. So yeah, that was uh, a quote from the Namibian Sun. Um, so yeah, it's, a, it's like a lot. And it's all like, yeah, centered around this like one, you know, kind of particular um, particular area there. Um, so, you know, obviously these kind of things always get, you know, like played up by the press, right? So they called this killer, the B1 butcher, but no one's really sure. Like, is it one killer? Is it like copycat killers or just like, no, no one really knows, but it seems like they're all kind of linked together. You know, there's like a pretty strong MO that links them together. And part of that, you know, is that they were all dismembered, right? All dumped along this road, the B1. Um, but also that all of the dismembered body parts actually showed signs of being frozen and or refrigerated. So it seems like what happened was this killer, you know, would find these women who, uh, some of them were, were definitely sex workers. Like there was a sex worker that came forward and, um, talked to the, um, a a paper in Namibia, the Namibian, I think it's called to say that like, yeah, the Namibian, that a friend and fellow sex worker told that paper that she knew and worked with Garros and Jance. Um, so it seemed like, 
he presumably would pick these women up, you know, take them to whatever location, kill them, you know, keep the bodies, cut them up, keep them refrigerated or whatever, either, you know, it doesn't say that they found any evidence of, like, you know, cannibalism necessarily, but, you know, maybe just to wait for a better time to, like, drop off the bodies or something. Yeah, what if, like, the timing is deliberate? Yeah, it could be, and the the press definitely, like, some of the articles I read definitely played up, like, the way that the bodies seem to be, like, posed, or not posed necessarily, but the, the this seemed to have been done for, like, dramatic effect, right? Like, you know, putting these bodies out there where everyone was going to see them, and where they're, like, obviously going to be found, like, along this road, and some of them were, like, pretty near each other as well, like one you know like months or years later found like at the same site as one of the earlier ones so there does seem to be like something to you know how these things were placed seem to have been important to the killer for some reason or killers um and just kind of like go down the the names of the victims that we know of uh Juanita Mabula 21 years old murdered in 2005 Melanie Jantz, uh, 22 years old, in 2005 as well. Sana Helena Garros, 36 years old, died in 2007. And then the last two were actually uh, not identified. Okay, okay. So there were some that weren't. Because I feel like, right. I don't know. Oh my gosh. And there were others that may may have been linked. Uh, there was one in 2010. They said maybe, but probably not. So it seemed like it was just from that 2005 to 2007 time period. And then, like, all of these things, like, who knows why, you know, it stopped at that point. Um, They were all black women, you know, native to Namibia. And um, three of them were identified as being fluent in Afrikaans and Damara, the, like, local language. Um, And, yeah, they were all dismembered. The, The method of killing, though seemed to have been a little bit different. Um, Jance was strangled. Mabula was hit on the head with, like, a blunt object. And I didn't really see the, like, method of, of killing for the other ones. So, But they were all dismembered and put along this highway? Yeah, but a- after they were killed, they were all, like, dismembered and placed along the highway. And it seems like they were probably picked up in, like, a similar way. Um, like I said, those two were definitely sex workers. The other one, um, Mabula, I think her family said that she was not, like, involved in that at all. So they're, they're not ha- sure how she, like, met the killer. Or, like, the other ones, obviously. They don't really know. But it seems like, you know, he probably picked them up or, like, somehow tricked them into getting into the car, right? And then, you know, it's over. Jeez. Yeah. But it seems like this killer definitely would have had, you know, a place to go. You know, if we're kind of, like, trying to build a profile, right? Um, Would have had some knowledge of human anatomy, you know, to dismember the bodies. Yeah, yeah. And they did say it seemed like it was... the case. Yeah. It it does seem to be coming up a lot, right? (laughs) Talking about these these killers who dismember bodies. They typically seem to have some, like, medical knowledge or something like that. Wow. Um, but in in this case, we really don't know. But they they did say that it, the the cuts and everything seemed to have been done, you know, somewhat with, with some kind of skill. And then the, the keeping of the bodies, you know, for periods of time. Like, that's weird. I don't know what that's about. Because there wasn't any signs of cannibalism, you said, right? That no, they, like, not, not that I read about. But could they know? Were there... Yeah. Were there but, missing body parts still? That, like, weren't found? Yes. There were a couple of hands and feet that were never found from one of the victims. But other than that, no. Hmm. And so who knows, really. Every, I think everything else was pretty much accounted for. Maybe one of the heads was never found. I can't remember. Um, so, yeah. The, the investigation, you know, they um, interviewed people and, like, but it, the, the police seemed to have been kind of incompetent, honestly. Like, people were kind of, like, complaining about how this probably wasn't really, you know, investigated properly. 
Um, but the police say that the investigation is, like, still open. Like, I read an article from 2014 where they were talking about how they're still, like, looking into it and everything. But no one has ever really come... And this is where by Zimbabwe? This is in Namibia. Okay. It's in s- southern a- Africa. So um, was like... like southeastern Africa. Southwestern Africa, rather. So it was, like, by Zimbabwe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's, like, it borders, like, you know, the ocean, and I think it borders Zimbabwe. Anyway, um, yeah, there were two suspects that came out, though. Um, one named Hans uh, Knierman, or Knierim or something, who was uh, born in Germany, but was a resident of Namibia, and he was arrested in August of 2007. He was a strong suspect in a rape and attempted murder that happened in the area around the same time. He always denied the allegation, and he was actually acquitted in 2010 for lack of evidence. And he had actually ended up suing the Namibian government. Uh, although I don't know if there was ever a settlement or anything. But it, I guess, seems like it wasn't actually him, even though he spent like three years in prison. Yo, this one's weird. It is very strange. And there's like not that much out there about it. Um, yeah, you said you're... Your write-up was kind of short. Yeah, it was kind of short. I'm, I'm like, almost done. Um, the other main suspect was a man named Hans uh, Husselman, who was convicted and serving a life sentence for a double murder, but I guess he was, like, out on parole when these mur- when these killings occurred. Um, one of the victim's DNA was actually found in his house, which is pretty, um, you know, it, something, you know, some evidence at least. But nothing was ever prov- proven against him, and he actually uh, committed suicide. Um, like, because of the of being implicated in this. Whoa. It seems. Um, so, he's probably the one that's maybe the strongest suspect. But. Hans. I feel like you could also argue that, like, because he killed himself all of that stress got to him like maybe he really was innocent and that's why he killed himself it just to me it seemed weird that he would even be that stressed about it because he was a convicted double murderer already oh but maybe that's a good point i mean it is five more murders but still i feel like I don't know. It just seems weird that yeah, he would have been that. Close. But there's no like they never have any like physical evidence or anything. There wasn't yeah too much physical evidence um, that I really read about other than that that DNA evidence. I didn't really hear about anything else. Um, but again, the the um, investigation may also just not have been that good unfortunately so yeah, yeah. that's yeah that yeah. seems the case for a lot of mystery murderies but there's also some ones like this where somebody comes at you know um comes out 10 20 30 years later and it's like hey you know i knew this person and they confessed to me or... right right so it could could end up being something like that too because like i said this was what 2005 to 2007 so yeah it's, it's like not pretty, that long ago pretty recent fairly recent fairly yeah. recent exactly so we'll see Let's see what comes out about it um but yeah my sources e. um of course the wikipedia article about it uh the b1 butcher and then also an article few articles um there's that one that i quoted from from the namibian sun and then also an article by do 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 sarihe gaumas at uh new era live dot n a and also uh, an article on a website called owa it's o w a a h h dot com um okay <laughs> yeah oh wow is it an abbreviation i'm not sure um of the seven brutal seven most brutal african serial killers <gasps> uh a listicle um and a listicle oh <laughs> yeah a testicle <laughs> and then uh an article um uh, from uh the, the namibian 
um, by Werner Mengus and Kakunawe Shinana. Yay! So, yeah, that's my story. I mean, not yay, but, you know. <laughs> that's what it is. What it is what it is. The okay. B1 Butcher. So, can you move this toward me only because my back? Today has been a day, everybody. Today has been a day. Anyway. Yep. <laughs> okay. What's yours? So, um, I did ocean mysteries. Cool. Mysteries of the ocean. So mysteries I just want to like. Ocean. I also just want to like explain how what like is, I. What is the ocean? What is uh, the uh, ocean? <laughs> what is a mystery? No, but um, I think the ocean in and of itself is a very fascinating concept. It's true. And it's one of Earth's biggest mysteries they say that 95 percent of it is an, is unexplored right just because it goes down so deep now that we have those like auto, 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 autonomous like explorer robot things it's gonna it's gonna be less but yeah it's crazy yeah and they're so and it's so fucking huge it's enormous it's most of the earth right um and there's just so much to it and really will never know how much is out there. I don't... No matter how much research we do over the next, like, million years, you know? Unless, like, I don't know. <laughs> it, it It's almost unfathomably large, yes. Yeah. It's like a concept you can't right. really swallow. The ocean. So you just have to kind of accept it. Because there is... It really is only one ocean. Like, they're all connected. Yes. These, like, seven seas, you know, whatever. So it's, like, this entire unknown world under our own. Um, and it, like, makes me think, like, what's out there? Who says Cthulhu doesn't exist? We don't know that. Cthulhu. What, what's that? Uh, Meg- Megalodon? The, yeah. The, like, supposed, like, huge dinosaur shark. Yeah. Which doesn't really make sense, right? Because dinosaurs and fish are like different. But any anyway, it's whatever. The Meg. <laughs> the Meg. Oh the, yes, there's a fucking the movie. movie. About it. I kind of wanted to watch that. I heard it was good. <laughs> me too. I it got good reviews. Which is surprising to me because I thought it was going to be like some Sharknado type shit. Is it Jason Statham? I don't know. I think so. Cool. He's good. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, how many times? How many times have I said anyway this episode? I just I don't know. Anyway, so the average depth of the ocean is two and a half miles. What? Which? It's I don't, crazy. I don't know. Like I can barely run one mile. Right. Um, because so if you're thinking about it on foot, that's how I think about it. If there was just like a straight road, like right. straight down to the, it would like, take you like. 30 minutes or 45 minutes to go like oh my god that and that's how far down it is and that's just average right so light can't penetrate past 300 feet deep so it's super super dark but there's beings down there doing who knows the fuck what bioluminescence yeah um there is an estimated 20 million tons of precious metal in the ocean um gold <laughs> there's gold in them there's, there's oceans. treasure <laughs> treasure treasure two-thirds of marine life itself has only been discovered that's like the estimate so there's millions more types of species types of weird things crawling around down there i was reading or about flying today, or yeah. gliding or what if it like disappears and then it Who shows knows? up like two miles later? That would be dope. Transporting. <laughs> yes. I just I don't know when I think about the ocean, like my mind goes wild, uh-huh. like a little kid, like imagination, imagination, <laughs> imagination, imagine the imagination land song from South Park. No. No. <laughs> okay, go no. on, go on. Um, <laughs> so it's the biggest, quote, museum. So there's all kinds of crazy shit and artifacts that are down there. Like, you know, the Titanic. Um, did we get all of it? What? Of the Titanic? 
No, it's never been pulled up. They've, like, explored it, but they haven't, like, pulled it out of the ocean, no. Are they going to pull it out of the ocean? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think you can preserve it outside of that environment. Right. Or missing flight MH370. Yeah. We don't know exactly where it is. Yeah. But probably in the ocean, probably in the Indian Ocean. Or lost cities. Right. Um, all types of stuff. There was also, uh, I read about a crystal pyramid, but that turns out to be a huge hoax. <laughs> I was really I've excited about it. Yeah. But it's not, like, feasibly possible or scientifically possible or something like that. Mm. So, the deepest part of the ocean is 36,000 feet, um, which is the Mariana Trench. Right. Ooh. So Every time weird. I think of trench, I think of Finding Nemo. <laughs> yeah. That's what I knew what a trench was because of Finding Nemo. <laughs> Finding Nemo. Let's just go straight things. through this trench. <laughs> no, Dory. We have to go around the trench. Um. So the water pressure down there is about eight tons per square inch. So it's basically one human being holding 50 or so jumbo jets. That's crazy. Die, you would die. <laughs> With without your, you know, James Cameron pressure, you know, submarine around you. Even like when you like dive down to like 12 feet of water and your like head kind of hurts. Yeah. That's only 12 feet. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, multiply that times 10,000. Times 3,000. 3,000, 3, fuck. <laughs> it's okay. We're learning together. I'm not good at math. You know, I'm really good at simple math because I learned how to break it down. Uh-huh. Break it down now. Bump, 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 bump. Okay, moving. This is a very loose episode everybody you're a loose episode i'm a loose episode i'm a lost episode <gasps> you're a lost we boy. have a lost episode you should be a lost boy for halloween i was peter pan shadow once nice that was my freshman year of college oh yeah that sounds good anyway anyway let's talk about some weird stuff in the ocean first the milky sea phenomenon so this at first was thought to be a legend, but then they found it it was real. Because when you think about it, it does sound like a hallucination. Um, so sailors for years and years uh, told stories of um, miles and miles of uh, pale, milky, glowing waters that they would come upon. Um, so... I have a good description of it. Let me pull it up because I was ready to go. Here it is. <laughs> okay. Um, so, quote, Milky Sea event reported in 1995 by a British merchant vessel called the SS Lima in the northwestern Indian Ocean. Um, so on the January 20th, on January 25th and 95, it reported that, quote, on a clear moonless night, while 150 nautical miles east of the Somalian coast, a whitish glow was observed on the horizon, and after 15 minutes of steaming, the ship was completely surrounded by a sea of milky white color with a fairly uniform luminescence. It appeared as though the ship was sailing over a field of snow or gliding over the clouds, end quote. Beautiful. That sounds really cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, I wish I were there. I know. So, in 2005, a man named Dr. Stephen Miller and a team of uh, scientists successfully mapped, like, satellite mapped this phenomena. So, it is real. Um, and they mapped it, quote, about the size of Connecticut. So, it was huge. Like, wow. miles and miles and miles of this. Um and when they took a sample, they found bioluminescent bacteria called Vibrio harvei, I think. Latin, you know? Latin. I have a lot of Latin in here. Because science. Science. 
so it produces a faint, sustained glow, unlike a, another type of bioluminescent vac- bacteria called dinoflagellates. I think that's how you say that. Um, which have like big, bright flashes. And these these ones, uh, the Vibrio harvei, is um, fainter. So that's why there usually has to be so many together for it to be um, noticeable. And why they gather like that, who knows? No mm. one knows. It's a mystery. Um, so let's talk about the purple orb. In 2016, researchers from Ocean Exploration Trust found, like, straight up found, like, a weird purple blob thing in the ocean, um, on the ocean floor off the coast of Calif- of Southern California. They nicknamed it Blobus Purpleus. <laughs> Good. Real, <laughs> real fucking inventive name, scientists. Yep. Blobus Purpleus. So, purple blob, let's name it, uh... Blob is purpleless. Yep, <laughs> yep. That sounds, uh, <laughs> do you guys think that's funny? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's that's pretty funny. So, they hypothesize, it's hypothesized to be a new Hypothesize. species of velutinids, a.k.a. a type of snail. Uh-huh. Um, so it's like a few inches in diameter. It's like this weird jelly-like sack, and they think it could take years to identify. But the latest update, quote, after sampling, the blob began to unfold to reveal two distinct lobes, end quote. Weird. Ew. I read that and I was like, ew, it moved. Ew. Can you imagine? They're like, the, the fuck is that? <laughs> and I think I read that they like wrestled it from a crab. They're like, give it. Give me it. Give me it. <laughs> we need to look at it. We want to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Next on the list, the giant squid. So Ooh, I love the giant squid. The max size of this thing. It's it's just like a very mysterious creature because we mm-hmm. really don't know much about it and it's only been seen. It's like rarely ever seen right. because it lives in like deep deep waters. Right. So the max size for a female is 43 feet um and males 33 feet. So the first image wasn't taken till 2004. In, in Japan. Um, and in July 2012, a, a live adult was filmed uh, off the coast of Japan. So it is not to be confused with the colossal squid, which uh, measures up to, av- or the measure, uh, it measures 46 feet on average, whereas the giant squid max size is 43. Um, and instead of like suckers on the tentacles, it has little hooks and... Um, The largest one weighed in at over a thousand pounds, but it was found inside a sperm whale. It was like the stomach contents of a sperm whale. So they think that like the one that weighed in over a thousand pounds might be just like the average size. Um, So they really don't know how big they get or how big they can get. Mm -hmm. Um, So that begs the question, if there's these huge animals that were just recently found, like what else is, is there, there something else out there that we don't know about that's like just as big or even bigger? Yeah. What the hell? Probably din- like, like dinosaurs. It's like scary. Like, like what if there's like one that's like what if there's like just like this weird animal that's like two miles long? Like wouldn't that be weird? It would, wouldn't be sustainable. How do you know? That's... You don't know anything. I it's a mystery. I don't know much about it, but I feel like <laughs> an animal couldn't grow that big. What about like the coral reef? Reason. Is that like one organism? No. That's a bunch of different ones. Oh. Yeah, the coral reef. Is, the reef is like the the place that the coral like seats on, but there's like a tons of different like individual corals that live there. Oh. Okay. There's also a thing called the immortal jellyfish. Or Teratopsis dorine, dorni. Um, so found in the, it's pretty small. It's like, I think it's like less than an inch in diameter. Um, found in the Mediterranean Sea and in the waters of Japan. Um, so it's like, quote, immortal. This is actually like really weird. 
once the adult form has has reproduced, if it's faith, faced with some kind of threat, like physical damage or starvation or some type of trauma, um, it can transform back into a polyp stage. Um, and the process is called trans differentiation um which is a transformation of cells into another type of cell um so the polyp eventually buds and then it releases medusae which is um a younger phase of of life uh that are genetically identical to the adult so no one knows how this works and it also adds the question of if an organism's cells are replaced, is it still the same individual? Well, that's what I was thinking. Like, does it have some kind of persistent consciousness? Yeah. Or does it just feel like it's like... D- dot, or, d- I don't... That's so crazy. <laughs> Isn't that weird? It's as if we could, like, become a fetus again and then, like, grow up again. Yeah, it's bizarre. And what they're looking at if they can figure out how this works we can put it towards medical purpose possibly like studying how to cure cancer like if we can figure out how this happens we can recreate cells like that's huge it's a big thing yeah um next on my list of weirdness (laughs) is the yanaguni monument um so basically this is it's it's called like the Atlantis of Japan. There's a lot of cool stuff in the waters of Japan, <laughs> I found. So um, it's basically a submerged rock formation off the coast of Japan. Um, scientists debate whether it's completely natural or if it's like a sunken, man-made artifact. And there's like pretty good arguments for why it could be both. So it was discovered in 1987. It's basically made of sandstone and mudstone the biggest part is like this huge slab of rock that's 500 feet long 130 feet wide and about 90 feet tall so it's enormous um there's also pillars there's a stone column there's a 33 foot wide wall there's a road and there's a star-shaped platform um so it could be a natural phenomenon because of earthquakes, because that area of uh, the ocean is very earthquake prone. Um, it could also be done by erosion, but some parts have like exact lines, and there's also a trench with a ninety degree like that has like a ninety degree angle. Um, but erosion creates softer edges and not like rough angles like that. So if it is man made, why and how did it get down there? Um, what for? What do they use it for? Is it part of a city? And or is it aliens? Do aliens live down there? Probably. Who knows? Fish aliens. Fish aliens. Probably. Next Most likely. On my last but not least on my list are the so this is unrelated, but four submarines disappeared in. 1968. Okay. Um, the first one, the USS Scorpion, was lost May 22nd, 1968, killing 99 men in the middle of the Atlantic. The propeller failed. That's one theory, um, but no one knows for sure. The second one, the INS... Uh, and there's lots of more information on, on all of these, especially the Soviet Union one, which I'll talk about. Um the INS Dakar found uh, was was set okay so it set sail from Britain to Israel January 9th of that year 1968 um, its last location report was January 24th 30 miles southeast of the island of Crete so um, three days later it got a Morse code message like for help but the ship itself was still never found despite um, the extensive search that they did um investigators think that the code came from an unknown source for mischievous purposes or in to intentionally uh derail the search Hmm. the next one the minerve um from france it was lost january 27th with a crew of 52 uh it only disappeared 25 miles from its home port but it was still never found Hmm. 
that that one's I think is the one's very odd because very it, that one's straight up disappeared. Yeah. Um, and the next one is the Soviet sub uh, K one two nine. So it ended up being one of like the biggest secrets during the Cold War that the CIA kept. So it sank in the Pacific on March 8th, 1968. 98 crewmen took 98 crewmen with it. So Project Azorian, which is or was a CIA project to recover and salvage this uh, ship, um, planned in 1974. It cost $800 million at the time, which is $4 billion in like today's money. And it's it was the most secret and the most complex project to come out of the Cold War. Um, and I didn't do research on why, because there was a lot to it, and I felt <laughs> it wasn't relevant or yeah. necessary. Yeah, that's kind of a whole different story. It is a whole different story. Yeah. So I got a lot of sources. I got all that's interesting.com. Um, wiki up Wikipedia pages for the Milky Sea phenomena, uh, the giant squid, the Yonaguni monument, and the submarine disappearances. Cool. Um, what are the seven continents dot com? How stuff works. Uh, AntProject dot org and the American Museum of National History dot org web site. Nice. <laughs> Ocean. Weird. Weird. Crazy. The ocean. So weird right now. The ocean. All the time. <laughs> Not just right now. I know. I was, I was making a uh, Zoolander reference. What are we doing now? Is it time for weird, weird shit, shit in, in the, the news? news. Weird, weird shit, shit in, in the news. news. Weird shit. Weird shit in, in the news. news. Weird, weird shit, shit in, in the news. news. What? So I'm going to do one by um, Ashley Strickland at CNN. Uh, Bones reveal Neanderthal child was eaten by a giant bird. I was telling you about this one. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So there were these bone fragments that were found, I guess, of that they identified as being from like a uh, a young girl, like five to seven years old, who lived about one hundred and fifty five. Sorry, one hundred fifteen thousand years ago. So a long time ago, still. And because of all these, like, uh, pock marks and, like, holes and stuff that were found in the bones, they can tell that it went through the digestive system of a giant bird. They can't exactly tell if the bird ate it, you know, while the girl was still alive, or if it was like, you know, the girl died and then the bird was, you know, eating. They can't tell, but still. They can tell that these, like, particular person's bones went through, like, the digestive tract of a giant bird. Which I just think is pretty weird. <laughs> just a weird thing to think about. So, that's my weird, uh, little weird nugget in the news. It's very cartoonish to me. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I feel like what happened on, like, the Looney Tunes. Like a pelican. Yeah. Like, swallowing some, some character. Yeah. Hmm. Could be. Anyway, what, what about okay, you? You, so you I think news? I picked one. Good. Um, <laughs> this is the time to find out. <laughs> oh, okay. So this is from Happened in New Jersey. The A very weird place. The title is, is it? I think so. You just think so? What? what? I just want to know well, what made you say the, that. The Jersey Shore. Oh, that's what, like, weird, weird people. you're basing off the entire state. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even though it's, like, the Garden State. It's, like, mostly, like, farms and shit. <laughs> okay. The title is Cops Used Big Blue Dildo to Harass Men and Women. So Town says lawsuit should be tossed. So um, Mountainside, New Jersey is asking a judge to throw out an explosive sexual harassment lawsuit filed against the... Bureau by five male police officers and a female dispatcher, partly on the grounds that alleged misconduct in the department, including repeated displays of a large dildo, was directed at both men and women. (laughs) Classy. So classy. Um, It says it detailed alleged 
misconduct dating to 1998 that in addition to the recurring displays of a dildo nicknamed quote big blue including one incident caught on video also purportedly included a laundry list of pranks involving nudity homophobic games and racial slurs jesus christ great job new jersey (laughs) great job fine work they're just like but maybe we should toss it and this happened 20 years ago? Dating all the way back to then, yeah. Wow. Or it's been happening for 20 years. It's been happening for. Okay. Yeah. Weird weird stuff. Well, thanks uh, for listening, you On guys. On that note of the uh, big blue dildo. I hope I hope your Wednesday is magical. Yes, and Wednesday! Fulfilling uh, financially and um, in other ways. Yeah. I, I hope all your dreams come true. Aww. And, um, reading Rainbow. Reading Rainbow. I don't know, I know that, that one. I don't know why that, that made me think of reading Rainbow. Okay. I'm not sure. Thanks for listening. It's thank late. you so much for listening. Thank you so much. Tell all your friends. Yes. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Hit us up on Patreon. Do it. And, uh, yeah. Keep, and happy Halloween. And happy Halloween month. Well, yes. It's, it, it is it is always Halloween. All October. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, bye. bye.